Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about boning. We're going to go over a few examples of different types of boning and also how to put it into your garment. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using Butterick 5969 and Butterick 5901. Let's go ahead and get started. Boning can be used in corsets, bustiers, swimsuits, and strapless gowns. What exactly is it? Well, it's a piece that's either made out of steel or plastic that can be sewn into the garment to either provide support, such as in this corset, or it can be a curved boning in order to create an effect, like create this hoop skirt. Now, to find out if your pattern actually needs boning, you're going to look in the notion section, and you can see right here, covered boning, and then it tells you how much you're going to need. Let's go over some of the different examples of boning that you can find. Now, the first example I have here is a steel boning. This is a white steel boning. The difference is this is a quarter inch and this is the extra wide. It's also a little bit thicker. So if you look at it, it's not as flexible as this thinner one, which definitely has a little bit more flexibility. But both of them are pretty rigid. They're durable and strong, so they make great for corsets that you really want to have a lot of support in. Now these ones can be bought in your desired length, so they come pre-cut and you can see the ends are rounded. So you don't need to worry about tips if you get the pre-cut. You just have to be careful that you get the right length that you need and you're taking into account seam allowance because we can't sew through these. So you wanna make sure that they're not gonna be hanging out in your seam allowance where you're going to need to sew. The one thing you do have to worry about these, even though they're very strong, they can't fit into curved seams. So I can't try to force this to go into a curve like this. It only curves this way or this way, and that's not gonna help us if we're working in a flat seam and all of a sudden it wants to curve in this direction. Next, let's talk about the spiral steel boning. So this one is less rigid than the steel boning that we just looked at because it does have some flexibility. You can see I can curve it a little bit. So this makes it ideal for sewing into those curved seams. Now, like the last boning we looked at, you can get it in a pre-cut length or you can get it in a roll. Now, if you get any of your boning where you have to cut it yourself, you do need to use boning cutters. You can't just try to cut them with your scissors because it can be really difficult and you also need to get tips. Now you can see this is rounded and it's already come pre-tipped, so you don't have to worry about it trying to bust through your seam, but if you cut it yourself, you're definitely going to have to get the tips. Next, we have a plastic boning. This is also called Feather Light in the store, and you could buy this in a package or you could buy it by the yard. Now this is the one that you usually see requested on the back of patterns because it's the one that you can normally find in most fabric stores. The other ones you'll probably have to get at a specialty shop or online. Now the problem with the plastic boning is it doesn't have as much durability and as much structure and support as the steel bonings. It'll give you light support, but if you want something that's gonna have a lot of support, then you're gonna wanna go with the steel. And it'll also last longer as well. The nice thing about this is it is easy to work with. You can cut it with scissors, so you can cut it to whatever length you want, and it comes with its own casing. So you can see here's the plastic boning inside, and then we have the casing, because you need the casing in order to sew your boning on. So with the other two bonings, you can either buy pre-made casing, you can make your own casing, you can use bias tape, you can use ribbon, or you can use a channel that you can actually sew onto your garment using the seam allowance. The last boning I'm gonna talk about is the wriggling boning. Now this boning you can see is made out of plastic as well. And the nice thing about this boning is the only boning that you don't need a casing for. You can just sew it directly to your fabric, either with machine or with hand. You can see it's very light and flexible, not so much for curved seams though, because it only curves this way or this way. The thing about this is it provides very light support. So it's not really meant for support. It's mostly used for shaping your garments if you want to give your garment an interesting shape. And the nice thing is that you can hand wash it or you could dry clean it. The steel bonings here, these ones are dry clean only. If you want something washable, you can use the plastic boning. You just need to make sure that you pre-shrink the casing of the boning first. You don't need to wash the plastic, of course, just the casing, and then that'll make it washable for you. There are other types of boning out there, but right now I'm gonna start going over how to stitch our boning into our garment. So we're gonna start with the wriggling. Now you can see it's kind of curvy. 
So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to heat up my iron. Make sure you don't heat it up too hot because, again, this is plastic. We don't want to melt it. And you can also do the same thing with the plastic boning. Unless you actually want it round to make a hoop skirt or something like that, you probably want to flatten it out. So you can either use the iron, and I'm just, all I'm trying to do is just warm up the plastic, and then I can just lay a heavy book or something on top of it in order to make it lie a little bit flat. So while it's still warm, lay something heavy on it, and so after it cools, it should lie a little bit flatter, make it a lot easier to work with if you're actually putting it in a, in a garment like a corset. Another thing you can do is you can take your boning, the plastic boning, and you can put it into a bowl of really hot water. It'll do the same thing where it'll just warm it up so it'll make it a little bit more flexible. And then you can do the same thing. Go ahead, take it out and place a really heavy book on it and then that should help. Now I'm ready to sew some of my boning to my garment. Now this is the corset from Butterick 5969 and this is the lining. Normally if you're sewing a garment that's gonna have boning and there's a lining, it goes to the lining piece. So we're looking at the wrong side. You can see all my seams here. Whatever seam you're sewing boning to, you wanna press it as flat as you can. Again, you wanna make sure that the boning is not going to be in the seam allowance. So my seam allowance for this is a half inch, so I'm gonna shorten it by a half inch on either side. That way we're gonna make sure that we're not actually sewing when we sew our seams, that we keep sewing over the boning. Also, I rounded the ends a little bit so that we don't have pointy ends that are gonna pop out through my seams. And just to protect it even more, Either use a piece of cotton, or in this case, I'm using a little bit of grow grain ribbon. And I'm gonna put the grow grain right over the ends, placing my boning right in the middle of that seam allowance. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, right here. And if it's really hard to hold this all down, you can go ahead and use a little bit of fabric tape just to hold it into place, because I know with pins, it's gonna make it really difficult. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna sew a perimeter stitch around the boning. So I'm gonna go across the ends, down the side, across the end, and then up the other side as well. Because this is really thick, you might wanna use a heavier needle um, just so it goes through it a little bit easier. As I'm sewing, you can see I'm just hugging that edge of the boning. I wanna make sure I don't get this fabric or ribbon caught. So I'm gonna put my, my needle down, lift my foot, and then put it back down. Once I get to this corner, let's get a little closer. I'm going to leave the needle down, lift the foot, and I'm gonna pivot. Then I could sew across and I could do the same thing when I get up on this side and then sew all the way over. So I'll leave the needle in, lift the foot, and then pivot and sew the other side. Next, I'm gonna show you what to do if you're working with casing and a boning. Now, this one is the plastic one, so it has the casing and then it has the plastic boning inside. But the process is going to be the same regardless if you're using this or you're using other casing with steel boning. It's still the same process. You have your casing and you have your boning. So what you're gonna do first is you're gonna cut your casing the length of the seam that you're putting your boning in. So that's already been cut. If you have boning inside your casing, like the plastic one, go ahead and remove that after you cut it. Then just like we did with the other boning, you're gonna take the empty casing, you're gonna place it in the center of the seam, you go ahead and pin it into place, and you're gonna do an edge stitch. So you're gonna sew as close as you can to the edge of the casing on both sides. You're not doing the ends because we need to leave an opening to put the, the boning back in. So I'm gonna sew this side, and then I'm gonna sew this side. If you look at my casing, you'll see that I actually have stitches already there. I'm just going ahead and following along with those stitches. You wanna make sure that you don't go too far inside those stitches, or you may possibly make your casing too small to replace your boning. If you have pre-cut boning, like the steel boning, you can go ahead and put it back in the casing. Now you need to remember, we cannot have any boning in the seam allowance area. So if your seam allowance is a half inch, a half inch on both sides of the casing need to be 
boning free. So you need to take that into account when you order your boning. If you have the plastic boning that just comes inside the casing, you need to cut off enough so you have enough for that seam allowance opening. So when I place this in and I have a half inch, it's gonna end right here, which would be perfect for me when I'm doing my seams for the rest of my garment. You can see I rounded the edge, so I did that with my scissors. And just to kind of soften it so it's not quite as scratchy, a little trick I use is I just use a nail filer and I just file off the ends. So it kind of, if there's any pointy ends or parts, it'll keep it from poking through. So then I can just go ahead, put this back in. And once it's all the way in there and you have it so it's not inside the seam allowance side, sometimes you really gotta push it in there. So after I push it in and I have a half inch free, I'm gonna go ahead and baste both ends to keep my boning in place. We're now gonna go in a different direction and talk about boning in order to create shape like we have with this hoop skirt here. Now, normally you can use hoop boning. I don't have any, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use my plastic boning because it also has a natural curvy shape like you can see here. And that's the shape we're trying to achieve. You're gonna take your casing and you're gonna place it horizontally across the skirt. It's one single piece that starts at the center back seam, goes all the way around, and then ends up right back at the same spot. Now you don't have to use boning casing per se. You can use ribbon, you can use twill tape, uh, you can also use bias tape. You just need to make sure that it's gonna be bigger than your boning so we can go ahead and slip that in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my boning so it's actually one inch bigger than the length that I'm going around here. And you'll see that my casing isn't all the way st stitched down to the center back seam. I'm leaving about an inch and a half gap of not having it sewn down. So it gives me a little room to work here. So this is one inch bigger because once I put it in and I come to the other side, the ends should overlap by a half inch. So here are my two ends here and I want them to overlap by a half inch. Now you need to be careful when you stick it in the casing that you're paying attention to the shape. You'll see it has a natural curve and we're looking at the inside of the skirt here or the raw side and you want it to curve around your body. So when we're placing this in, looking at the wrong side, you're gonna place it so it naturally wants to curve up. So I'm gonna start at one end, stick it in, and then once it comes back around on this side, then I'm gonna overlap them. So here we have them overlapping. Now you can purchase something called a hoop connector which is something that you can put over these ends to connect them. I don't have anything like that. So we're just gonna follow the directions that's in the butterick pattern. So once they're overlapping, you're gonna get some glue, you're gonna put glue in between them, and you're gonna hold them together till the glue is dried. I'm then gonna grab some heavy duty thread and put it on my needle here. And I'm just going around the two overlapping bony pieces. So I'm going under and over, and I'm just doing that quite a few times. Then I'm gonna grab some more glue, put that over my thread, because I just wanna secure everything and make sure that these aren't gonna come apart again. Once it's dry, we're just gonna pretend like my thread is no longer here. You can go ahead, put down the casing again. If you have raw edges showing, you can turn them under. And then you're gonna finish stitching the top and the bottom so then everything is secured in. After that, my boning hoop is in and this part is done. We hope that you're able to use these tips in working with boning for the next project that you have. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit professorpincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at professorpincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.